Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're taking a look at the high grade Maguanac. And as always, huge thank you to S.A. Gundam Store for sponsoring the review. Do check the link to their site there down below. Those of you guys living in North America, shop on their site and use that coupon code there, Zakorilius10, to save 10% on everything. Now, if you guys have built the HG After Colony Leo, it's similar in a lot of ways, but it's really not as similar as you might think. Now, there are of course similar aspects, and it's mostly just in the simplicity of the way that the kit goes together. It's very well designed. It's a very well designed kit to be very simple. And I will say this one is a little bit more complicated than the Leo though. So that said, just because of the design of this kit, it does have a couple of stickers, so it's not fully part separated, but the part separation on this is really quite good. I think the band I really could have gone that extra little 5% and just made a little bit more color separation to eliminate those stickers, but we'll get into that here shortly. Let's just first take a look at everything that you get included here with the kit. So let's just talk about the stickers first as those are one thing that do come with the kit. Of course, you got this pink one there for the mono eye and it's got like the little black lines through it so it looks like kind of cool there for the eye. Then you've got a purple circular part there for the camera lens for the beam rifle. We'll come back to that in a moment. And then you've got a couple of beige colored stripe there for the front of the shield, one at the top and one at the bottom. And the only other stickers here for this are these orange parts there on the front and back of the shoulders. Now here's where I'm talking about how we have these parts color separated, color separated, separate parts, separate parts, separate parts for everywhere else of the orange bits. But here on the shoulders, those are just stickers. Now I feel like the Bandai could have pretty easily made those separate parts as well. Obviously that would have added a little bit more complication, a little bit more parts to the shoulder armor, a little bit higher price, I guess, if it really possibly, but it really would have been nice if it was just all nicely color separated instead of having to rely on stickers for that. So you will have to do a little bit of masking and uh, painting for that. Now you do also get a set of marking stickers here for this uh, interesting font of numbers. You get two sets of zero through nine in large font and two sets in smaller font. Now as for the weapons, the first one here just molded in this very dark gray, basically black part here is this heat tomahawk, pretty cool looking weapon. Then we have this little connector piece for that so you can stick that onto there. Go around here on the back, you can stick this right onto the back skirt there for storage. There you go, that works pretty well. And then you've got the shield, which is pretty nice on the front. It looks pretty cool with the two colors, the dark brown color and then the tan. This nice design. On the back though, you are going to probably want to paint that just to make it so it looks a little bit less like an HG kit, I guess. And then you have this connector piece that connects onto the side of the arm. So you can choose whether you want to have the shield connected either on the side of the arm or the back of the arm, so you have that option there. And then we have the beam rifle. Now, as I said, you got a little sticker there for the camera. Otherwise, it's just very simple, just basically two halves sandwiched together and then a third part here for the tip of the barrel. But just very simple little beam rifle here for this. Obviously, this just fits down into the hand, but you can also store this on the back of the shield, interestingly enough. And then we have this part here for the shield for plugging this onto the backpack, so you can plug that onto there and that's gonna plug here into the center of the backpack. But you can clip the beam rifle into the back of the shield here as well. Now, it fits into there well enough, kind of, sort of, but it's quite loose and it's not really gonna stay in there. That said, once this is attached onto the back, hopefully that will kind of hold it in place there. So that just attaches onto it like that, but you got a very wide gap here between the mobile suit and the backpack. So I kind of wish that that connector piece was a little bit shorter so that the uh, shield actually rested closer to the backpack. That said, it is also kind of weird that you, then you have like the thruster bells pointing straight back. So if it actually has to use those backpack thrusters, it's going to blast his rifle and the backside of his shield there. So it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but it's just nice that you can actually store everything on the kit that is convenient. Now let's take a look at some of the articulation. Now the head will kind of chicken neck forward and back like that, but it doesn't actually going to point up very much at all really. It does point down just a tiny bit. Very little difference in that actual articulation there. It can go side to side, but as you can see that little chin bar is going to prevent it from turning all the way around. You can basically just get it off to the side a little bit like that. Here in the stomach section, you have a little bit of forward and back ab crunch there. Not really a whole lot. You have some rotation there. Of course, that's not a problem. Around on the back, nothing moves with that. That's just all fixed there. For the shoulders, those will swing out to the front like so. This bit here on the side will move up and down like that. The whole shoulder armor itself will also move up on its own like that. So you can actually get the arm up and then fully extended to more than 90 degrees. So that's a pretty good upward movement there at the arm. Otherwise, the arm is going to be pretty standard with some rotation here at the top. 
and then a nice joint there in the elbow giving you a pretty full bend there for that the wrist just on a ball joint and then you can see you can plug the shield onto the back of either the left or the right arm if you're so inclined as for the skirts those come connected but you can separate those really easily to move them up separately the side skirts are just attached via a ball joint here so you can move those around a little bit as well but it's a pretty loose fit on there if you move them around too much it's going to pretty easily pop off around to the back skirt nothing moves there again but some nice color separation and even on the head here i didn't point out before but this is also separate uh, parts for that so again just really nice color part separation for the majority of the kit here so it just makes it even more of a shame that it didn't have that for the shoulders but anyway moving back to the articulation here for the legs of course so we can rotate those a little bit there at the top you can get the legs spread out to about here before you're going to be popping off the side skirts you can bring the leg up to just about 90 degrees there and nice double joint here in the knee for a really nice full bend for that so just nice mechanical detail there around the knee joint that looks pretty good now i just want to talk a little bit about the seam lines here on the legs so on the thigh piece that's one solid piece of armor so that's just a molded in uh, panel line there on the legs on the leo you had a panel line detail it was the same thing like a front and back half sandwiched together there for the calf of the leo it's the same thing on this but where the leo that had a panel line detail for the edge this is actually no panel line but it's not a regular seam because it's a different levels so the front half is a little bit raised so it is meant to have a line there but it's not like a traditional kind of panel line it's just a, an edge there so that's kind of interesting if you didn't want to have that though of course you could just glue it and remove it as like a normal seam line just uh, file sand that down whatever so you get a nice smooth surface all the way around the lower legs there but he's definitely got some cankles on him got some thickness there in the lower leg uh, that is going to look pretty unique for the design these ankle armor parts will move forward and back just a little bit there you have a little bit of movement the feet nice color separation for these as well you got the tan the brown and the black all for that nice details up underneath the feet you can get those pointed forward to just a little bit like that pointed down there pretty nice and far so that's good and then side to side just a little bit for that so articulation overall is nothing really amazing but it does the job to be able to get the kit into some pretty cool poses the detail on it is pretty nice obviously you have a lot of areas where there's not a whole lot of detail the legs are pretty much entirely detailless except i mean the tan armor color parts and just a lot of the kit doesn't really have a whole lot of detail in general but where you do have the detail it is really nice little uh like little verniers around on the side of the side skirts the side of the shoulders molded in there and like i mentioned before just the details of the elbow and the knee joints those look really nice as well so just bringing out those details with a little bit of extra painting on those is going to look really nice just to help the, uh, make those really obvious on the kit itself as it is just straight out of the box those details aren't going to be immediately popping out just because it is an hg and while the color separation on this kit is pretty good in general uh, obviously you're not going to have those tiny little bits of color apps uh, as separate parts or anything like that separate colors here in an hg they could have given us a boatload of stickers for all the little verniers everywhere and everything like that that would have been a pain but yeah you can paint those in and it's going to be looking really nice and then for a size comparison here it is compared with the hg arc 782 gundam and hg leo as you can see it's going to be pretty much the same size as the leo and they're both going to be coming in a little bit shorter than your standard gundam size so it's definitely not a very big kit but overall it makes for a nice just simple fun hg kit and relatively cheap one at that you have just the shield the beam rifle and in this case instead of a sword you have have the uh, axe there or the uh, heat tomahawk but anyway so pretty standard array of accessories for it but they all work really nice you know detailed pretty well it's just your standard HG fare for the most part and so if you're a fan of this design and want to build one or two or three or all 40 of them if you decide that you want to get the P Bandai sets again just a reminder to you guys if you haven't seen about the P Bandai sets that are coming out for this there's one set of two there's a different set of two and then there's a set of 36 of these if you wanted to get the full 40 now yeah that's going to be a lot of kits i definitely don't want to build 40 of these but hey if you're a big super fan and you wanted to make a really incredible like diorama piece of having all 40 of them together that would be pretty insane and i'm looking forward to someone actually doing that i'm sure someone will i'll be looking out for that uh well following the japanese builders that i build on uh, that i fo follow on twitter i'm sure one of them will be insane enough to actually go about doing that and while I don't think this, this design is quite as easily open to customization as the Leo, obviously there's 40 different variants and all a bunch of different variants that you can make with the parts you're getting in those P-Bandai sets. Uh, aside from those P-Bandai sets, 
I think the Leo is a much easier design just to customize because it is so generic and blank looking. Uh, this one obviously has its own kind of style to it already and so I think modifying this may be going to be a little bit more tricky but it still should be pretty fun to try to do some kit bashing or customizing with this if that's what you really wanted to do with it. I think there is some room for that as well. But if you're looking for just a fun, simple, basic kit to just kind of build and uh, prep up if you wanted to paint it, you know, it's going to be a relatively easy kit to get paint up as well. Just very little in the way of seam lines for it, just like the rifle, maybe a couple little bits here and there, but it's just all kind of optional for the most part. It doesn't really have any big major seam lines that you have to worry too much about. So it's a pretty fun kit, I think, just overall. But again, just very simple. That's the only thing about it. So if you're looking for something a little bit more complicated, then there's a lot of better options for you. But if you like this design, then check it out. So that's it for my review, guys. Hopefully that was helpful for you. If there's anything else that you wanted to know or any other questions, comments you have, of course, leave, feel free to leave those down below. And do check out the link to USA Gundam Store in the video description, and the coupon code is there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey! Thanks for watching, guys. Remember, if you want to check the kit out for yourself, you can head over to USA Gundam Store. Use that coupon code ZAKUARILIUS10. Save yourself 10%. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.